Hello, Valerie from babywisemom.com talking with you today all about fixing baby's short naps. You have a lot of questions about those short naps, so let's get talking about how to get those fixed. Before we get started, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. There can be a lot of reasons that your baby is not sleeping well. So let's talk about quite a few of them. The first reason I want to mention is a growth spurt. Babies have growth spurts every three to four weeks, so they happen frequently. And when a growth spurt happens, your baby needs to eat more often. So if your baby is taking short naps, it may be because she needs to eat more often. So a baby who's been eating every three hours might need to eat every two and a half hours during a growth spurt. If this is the case, always feed a hungry baby. So feed your baby, the growth spurt will end. And of course, I do have a blog post all about growth spurts. On a related note, your baby might simply be hungry, but not necessarily having a growth spurt. This can happen if your milk supply is not correct, or if you're bottle feeding, if you need to increase the number of ounces per feeding, or if your baby's having solid foods, you might need to increase the solids. Your baby also will not nap well if he is teething or if he is sick. So those pains from teething can cause a baby to wake up when that transition happens. You may remember a transition happens every 45 minutes when the baby moves from one type of sleep to another. And that's a really sensitive point when a baby can wake up. Also, if the baby is sick, it can make it so the baby doesn't sleep well, either because if he had a cold, he couldn't breathe and that wakes him up, or if he just doesn't feel well in other ways, it makes it hard to sleep sometimes. Along that same thought is gas pain or reflux or any other kind of pain, even some type of allergy, of course, could wake up a baby. So if your baby's having gas pain, those gas bubbles really can be painful and wake a baby up. And if the reflux is coming up, it can be hard for a baby to sleep. I talk about hunger and pain or sickness very first because those are the very first things I want you to think about anytime your baby isn't sleeping well. You cannot fix sleep problems that are from hunger or pain if you try to change other things. You have to address the hunger, you have to address the pain or sickness, and then you can fix those short naps. But if you're trying to mess with the schedule or drop naps while your baby is hungry or in some sort of pain, it's never going to fix it. So always check those things first. Okay, after you've looked into gas pain and hunger, then consider your baby's wake time length. One of the most common reasons babies don't sleep well is because their wake time length is off. This can mean that your baby was awake too long or awake for not long enough. More often than not, people tend to keep their babies awake too long. So, Look at that first, look at shortening wake time length. I do of course have an entire blog post dedicated to finding your baby's optimal wake time length. So you can search the blog for optimal wake time length and find that post to get all of that help. Another really common thing that interferes with sleep is when your baby's learning a new skill and babies learn new skills throughout the entire first year, well, and beyond, but so your baby, when your baby learns to roll from the tummy to the back, your baby may decide that the crib's a great place to practice that. So instead of sleeping, your baby does that and then gets overly tired and can't fall asleep. The same can be true for sitting up, for crawling, for talking, for grabbing things with their hands, for looking at things. There's just all these new skills that can interrupt sleep. So that could be part of what is keeping your baby from taking great naps. The next thing to consider is if your baby is overstimulated or understimulated. This is closely tied to wake time length, but when your baby is awake, your baby may be able to handle being awake for an hour and a half if things are pretty calm. But if things are wild and loud and crazy and lots of things to see and hear and do, then your baby may need a shorter wake time length. And that's part of why there is such a range where an oldest child, baby, probably has a calmer environment 
where a youngest of five child baby may have all this noise and action going on and need to go back down for a nap sooner. So all of those stimulants impact how long baby can handle being awake. If too much of that happens, your baby won't sleep well. But also this, and that's more true with younger babies. As your baby gets older, it will be harder. You will need to give more stimulation. So those babies, as they hit around eight months and older, a lot of times they don't sleep as well because they're not getting enough stimulation. Um, and they can get overstimulated in older ages too. But so look at, think, consider how much physical and mental stimulation is my baby getting? Is it enough? Is it too much? Another thing to consider is environmental factors. This is the temperature of the room. It can be noises that are happening and that can be noises outside. It can be noises from family members in the house. I had a friend who said that her baby would wake up every time he could smell food. So you might notice little things like that. It's good to pay attention to like, what is happening when my baby wakes early from his nap? And pay attention to all those outside factors that can be waking your baby up. I had a baby who would wake up every time the heat was on and I realized that the heat register was blowing right into her face. So it may not even be the temperature, but it could just be the fact that air is suddenly blowing on your baby, waking your baby up. So pay attention to those environmental factors. There are also a lot of normal developmental sleep regressions and also wonder weeks, which are tied together. That could be causing your baby to not sleep well, and this is very normal. When your baby is going through a sleep regression, it's going to make it so sleep is not as good. There are also times the use of sleep props really interfere with your baby's sleep. So if you've been using a pacifier, then you might find at some point it's hard for your baby to sleep without the pacifier in the mouth. This often happens around three months old, where a baby who's been using a pacifier suddenly can't sleep without it in there. So that can be true of all types of sleep props. That doesn't mean you can't ever use a pacifier. It doesn't mean that all sleep props are bad. It just means you have to make a decision do we push through with this sleep prop or do we cut that sleep prop and help baby not need it anymore? And it's really up to you and how you want to handle the situation. There are also times that naps will be disrupted because there needs to be a change to the sleep schedule. Your baby may need to drop a nap or your baby may need a nap shortened. So be aware of when naps should be dropped and how long naps should be based on the age of your baby and it might be that you need to do that in order to get naps. The other naps, good again. Sometimes your baby may have trouble sleeping because he's not able to self-soothe. So remember the sleep transition I talked about earlier, where every 45 minutes transition through sleep. When, you, when the baby transitions through a sleep cycle, the baby almost wakes up. And if the baby isn't capable of falling asleep independently, then sometimes your baby will fully wake up instead of almost wake up. So if your baby cannot fall asleep alone, that might be why baby's naps are short. The final reason for poor sleep I'm going to talk about today in this video is a lack of routine or a lack of a schedule that can lead to your baby waking up. So having that solid eat, then play, then sleep cycle in your day really helps your baby to sleep well. So if you're not doing those things, start with having a nice daily routine that's consistent. It really helps babies to have naps at about the same times each day. It helps with naps if baby wakes up at the same time each day and has a solid bedtime each day, that feedings are consistent. All of those things really help lead to consistent and great naps. Okay, that wraps it up. I have talked about 13 different reasons that your baby may not be napping well. If you feel like any of these are true for your baby, be sure to head to the blog or to scroll down to read about what to do in the particular situation so that you can help your baby through this time. Some things like a sleep regression, there are little things you can do, but you primarily just wait those out. But it's good to know that you basically need to wait it out and not mix everything up. There are other things like growth spurts 
and schedule changes and even pain and sickness where you can do something to help baby actually sleep better. Thanks for watching.